And again, if there's any problems with seeing my screen or hearing me, uh, do let us know. We want to make sure this is a good experience for everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize now my video view and get us into the presentation. So first of all, welcome and thank you for being here this morning. A little bit about who I am for those of you I have not had a chance to connect with. Um, I launched the DTC Wine Workshops program, as Kat mentioned, in 2013. Since that time, I've traveled the globe. I'm speaking throughout Argentina, Australia, Canada, uh, and all, all throughout the U.S., almost every wine region now in the U.S. we support clients in. And so it's been a very exciting time the last seven years to stay on top of uh, direct-to-consumer wine sales and consumer engagement trends. I do publish a monthly blog and also contribute, as Kat mentioned, in many capacities in my speaking uh, engagements. If you have an interest in checking out more information about my company, I encourage you and invite you to connect uh, and check out our case study series, our consultant network uh, information. So today we have a lot to cover. In our two hours together, I'm going to do my best to provide you the tools and resources you need to either update your current concierge services program or build a new one from scratch. And so first of all, uh, it begins a lot of times with understanding how to leverage your, your winery's unique access points to then better engage with concierge style services. Uh, how to package and build in those itineraries that complement your unique offerings. We're gonna get into that piece and share some examples. Um, from there, we'll have a quick break and then come right back into uh, identifying the right questions to ask um, and knowing when to offer customizations. So I'll get into the different style of wine brands where this really makes sense. Um, the small brands of the Napa Valley, allocation only brands, luxury brands. Um, there are sometimes just very key questions and qualifiers that you need to be able to ask within your current customer environment, as well as your perspective through digital outlets. We'll have a breakout session. Um, so for those of you who have joined this morning, you should have received a reminder email from Kat with the worksheet attached. Um, if you do not have that worksheet, uh, I think maybe Jesse, if you're able to upload that into the chat window, if that's a possibility in this particular Zoom meeting, that would be ideal. Um, so you'll want to use the worksheet provided in Word document if possible, so that you can go right in and fill that out either online or have that printed out and ready to go we will take about 20 minutes to uh, get into that worksheet. And the goal with my workshop programs is to give you time when you're away from your phones, when you're away from the office and other meetings um, to truly get some work done um, before you leave our time together. It's also a great way to run ideas or questions past me um, during the breakout sessions. So moving on to then dedicating time, staff, and budget. Um, this question always comes up in my workshops, and so I went ahead and just made sure I uh, have those slides ready for you, some things to consider uh, when it comes to those key points. And of course, how to establish reasonable goals and track results. So measures of success is everything um, when investing time and finance into this new program. The last 10 minutes I'll reserve for Q&A and kind of a recap of our key takeaways. You will get a copy of this presentation. Um, I have included resource links uh, in every example throughout the presentation. Uh, and also you will have um, the follow-up uh, information as far as the recording provided from the Napa Valley Vintners team. Looks like there's a couple of things coming in, uh, just one moment here into the chat window. So Jesse, are we looking good here? Anything I need to know or should I continue? Thanks, Sandra. So far, so good. Okay, thank you. So this year, I've worked with the Napa Valley Vintners Group to present a series on wine consumer engagement strategies and best practices. And at the heart of everything that we're doing in our work together and our time together, it is this. It is that as a producer to consumer, um, that relationship is everything. It's the people piece that is the most important piece. And I can talk about outstanding tools and proven methods and case studies. But at the core of what we're doing, especially when we think about concierge services, we're making our unique audiences, whether it be our lifetime, you know, top lifetime value customers, our super fans, our long-term members and loyalists, our partners, our VIPs, we're making these people feel recognized, supported, 
and extra special, right? And so I hope in our time together today, I'm able to make you all feel inspired, educated, motivated, uh, intrigued, maybe in some cases, um, educated, right? And so um, I do love the late Maya, Maya Angelo. And then for those of you who've come to my past sessions, I open up every one of my workshops with this important quote. So with that said, let's get right into where we're at when it comes to wine consumer engagement strategies today, consumer engagement patterns. Obviously in the last six months, quite a bit has shifted uh, in the world of direct-to-consumer wine, uh, tasting experiences, visitor experiences. And so I'd like to present just some key uh, takeaways Keeping a very close eye on Nielsen data, Wines and Vines Analytics reports as of July, we know that there's been a significant increase in direct to producer to consumer shipment values of 30% um, during COVID, during the pandemic. The stronger growth in value versus volume reflected robust spending on table wines $20 and up, and the value increased 42% in the last four weeks of July. So, very interesting trends that we need to keep an eye on. Um, as we look to building out um, the future of your strategic offerings, uh, your DTC offerings, as well as your digital and virtual offerings. And I'm gonna touch a little bit on that today about how the concierge services can be a really big help when offering new uh, virtual and online services. Shipment value has totaled 154 million in July, up 30% just a year ago. The average bottle price of July shipments was 28.66, so it's down just a bit, um, you know, versus what we saw according to the ship compliant uh, direct shipping report uh, for the same time period. And we do know, of course, that the top varietals as far as growth rates we're seeing with GTC shipments include Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Rosé, and Sparklings. Of course, Cabernet, Merlot uh, are continuing to, uh, in terms of volume, uh, take the lead. Shipment volume increased 41% to 451,000 cases. Uh, a little bit over 451. Yes. And possibly wine. But if you have any other. Okay. Looks like we had a mute issue there. Um, so 41% increase. Pretty significant in uh, that one month period. And then from our client base, some significant trends that we've watched now with six months of, of data tracking. Um, many of our clients starting mid-March to end of March uh, started launching their virtual tasting programs, virtual bundles, and we've been able to help them pivot from point of sale revenue to phone sales, e-com, incremental club sales, and virtual offerings, 70 to 90 percent of their revenue. So that's substantial, and it's taken a, a very big investment of time and focus on the digital spaces and cross-training uh, tasting room staff. Uh, hosts and wine educators on what it means to reach out by phone um, and interact maybe and engage in the social media digital spaces um, to re-engage club members to provide uh, deeper access um, in building those incremental club sales. So we think that this trend that we're seeing in the virtual space, and here's an example here of a client in uh, Sonoma wine country, you know, hundreds and thousands in some cases of people are joining virtual events across the nation. And some key takeaways that I believe uh, many of you are experiencing now is that this has been a true extension of your wine brand across the nation with BFFs, family members, clients, uh, friends of uh, your connected consumers, your club member, uh, your long-term brand loyalists. And so um, some key takeaways in, in our case studies uh, for clients, small, mid, and large, is that these virtual offerings have really been meaningful uh, for the first time, that meaningful engagement between a consumer and uh, a producer in their, their living rooms, in their kitchens. There's a very intimate connection that's been happening the, the past six months. It's opened up a lot, of, a lot more dialogue than we've seen in the past in terms of information sharing. Uh, preference-based information sharing, uh, preference, interest, lifestyle information. So our CRM data is a lot heavier than we've seen in a long time for many of our clients. Um, we're building really important profiles for those loyal long-term customers that when it comes to then offering things like concierge services, high-touch hospitality the next time they visit, hopefully early next year or in the spring, you have now much more meaningful information to build 
more high touch experiences, customized experiences for your top customers. A couple of other trends that we are watching closely is the evolution of the concierge services. And it's just become a natural evolution as a complement to then providing private virtual experiences with winemaking team or family or your advanced level wine educators, et cetera. And so just this past week, when I did a quick search with jumpwinejobs.com on concierge, here's what came up. And so there's a lot of inspiration for you um, through you know, just reviewing some of your competitive set uh, or complementary set job postings. You know, what type of requirements and duties are they, re are they indicating in some of these job postings? Why are these positions important for such brands in the Napa Valley? Okay, so I think this gives us some great insights as to uh, number one, the importance of offering concierge services, but also how to map the proper concierge services to a variety of audiences. And so I'm gonna cover some of those key points here today. All right, so that was my overview piece of, you know, what we're really seeing as some of the key trends during COVID pandemic and beyond. Of course, right now we're looking at holiday gifting opportunities through virtual experiences. We're looking at getting more high touch with how we make recommendations around gifting uh, to a variety of audiences, corporate clients, um, best friends, uh, and I think, you know, we have a lot of time on our hands now um, outside of the tasting room to look at ways of improving bulk ordering processes, um, holiday gifting uh, for 20 to 30 people at a time uh, through a variety of tools. And so when we think about the concierge role, this can also be a supporting role when it comes to things like that, um, processing uh, large orders uh, for holiday gifting, working with your key corporate clients when it comes to uh, recommendations for their key clients, partners, uh, employees, etc. So let's get into what a concierge is. And um, this is a very broad definition, but I think it's always nice to set our intention and focus as we move together about what this person is and the importance of this position. I like a couple of points here. <clears throat> More than human search engines. You know, so when it comes down to it, we've all had interactions, I'm sure at some point with different concierges, whether it be within the Napa Valley, uh, with when maybe trips with our significant others at a resort or what have you. And something very special is not only do they always have all the answers, and they're the local guide, the local resource, the person who's gonna get the job done and make the best recommendation, but they also have the relationships built. Um, to be able to provide access, um, have the secrets to getting the best local experiences, um, snagging those difficult reservations, et cetera, the special perks. And so these are key attributes and how any concierge uh, can be successful, which, you know, to get here, there needs to be a little bit of, of work that's done ahead of time. Um, relationships need to be formed. Um, this person typically needs to have a good sense of the region. And so the Napa Valley, you know, as far as what's available, not only within your neighboring wineries, a uh, variety of experiences and access points, but also what's available in terms of the winery complement, um, outdoor adventure, car services, making recommendations for people traveling with, with kids or with pets, uh, people who are gluten-free or vegan, looking for special restaurant accommodations, etc. And so this the concierge role is actually a very uh, sophisticated role in some aspects. There needs to be a certain amount of emotional intelli intelligence also involved with a concierge um, to really understand the unique nuances, the unique uh, interests of your top customers. When it comes down to it, concierges help luxury travelers feel like insiders and VIPs. And that, going back to Maya Angelou, that is the feeling, that is the way that your concierge truly need to make your respective uh, customers, guests feel. And I'm going to get into some examples of how to position concierge services to the right audiences in an effective manner and help hopefully help you decide on how to launch and who to launch to first. Um, concierge services in some cases are not one size fits all. They're not available to the masses. 
they're sometimes available as an added perk to your top customers, uh, fans, VIPs, etc. But making those travelers, those luxury travelers, especially you think about your out of state uh, VIPs and members feel like insiders. The faster that this concierge can get there, the better, because that is where the re-engagement opportunity becomes much more rich. You become truly that trusted advisor then in this environment. All right, so what is the value of offering winery concierge services? So many of you in today's audience, based on the poll results, are considering um, you know, to either update your current offerings, um, considering different ways to market and maybe attach the value of the services that you have created to your current customer base. Uh, many of you are thinking about the time, um, energy, and budget that might be required to invest in such a program. So let's begin at the beginning. Um, you know, I know this is these are the top questions that are on your mind around why. And so, first of all, when offering concierge services, your brand becomes the first in the itinerary lineup. And this is critical. When you think about a re-engagement strategy, when you think about, um, for those of you who your top customers, members, maybe 60% 60, 60 plus live out of state, um, and we know the competitive nature today in Napa Valley, uh, over 450 wine brands I'm hearing now, tasting rooms um, to choose from. So when you think about uh, the competitive state that you're in today and the opportunity to re-engage your out-of-state um, customers and loyalists, this is critical uh, in making sure you've got something to offer um, when they're planning their trip back. It's a wonderful messaging point for your tasting room hosts, uh, your club team, when they're on the phone, especially today, or even in a virtual tasting. It's a wonderful talk point about uh, you know, the future journey. And gosh, we can't wait to see you in the spring. Uh, we're going to have a wonderful spring party and get back to operating in full swing or what have you. And we'd love for you all to come on out and be sure to check in. We have got some special itineraries and concierge services we can help you out with when getting your trip planned, right? And that's putting your wine brand then in the driver's seat and being that first that they're going to visit and also that trusted resource. Um, becoming regional brand ambassadors and the authority also is a very important piece when we think about re-engagement. Um, this is another tool that you're able to give your hospitality team um, when they're getting to know first-time visitors who qualify really well, who maybe leave with $500 to $1,000 in wine purchase and are talking about coming back in a few months, right? So positioning the concierge services program, your concierge to be able to help them with recommendations, with their trip planning, can be a wonderful way to encourage the proper re-engagement. Also, it ensures high level of re-engagement with key customers. So in some cases, our clients have introduced concierge services as a need to better retain luxury style clients, private clients, club members, allocation members. And so this service has become vital, not only from a competitive landscape, but from a business perspective, um, they, these are the type of questions that they're getting day in and day out. So instead of continuing to respond in a very reactive way, this has become more of a proactive approach um, and encouraging much um, more high levels of re-engagement with those key customers. Strengthen secure relationships with referral partners. And so many of you already have these partners in play, um, but how are you fostering those relationships? Um, do they feel that you are treating them uh, fairly? Do they feel that they're top of mind when you're making recommendations? Do they feel that you're organized and have a system or process in place for getting their information in front of key visitors, uh, members, VIPs? And so when you can start to, to formalize and organize an official concierge services division, uh, this is a wonderful talk point to those referral partners. In some cases, our clients have also given access in their reservation management tools to these key and core group of partners. So for example, seller pass, um, talk and others. Um, there are ways now to provide specific access to your uh, referral partners where they can log in and they can see block out times, dates, experiences that are right there ready for them to go in and access. So booking on behalf of their luxury resort client, um, looking at ways to um, plan ahead 
um, when they're building itineraries at their respective resorts, hotels, um, et cetera, adventure companies, et cetera. So think about the tools and then the opportunities you have through concierge services, and not only from a technology perspective, but from a messaging perspective. Also expand brand reach and market to the qualified visitors, right? And so I'm gonna talk about the importance today of marketing to your current base of customers when you do launch any type of new concierge services, but also some tips on how to reach new qualified audiences in the digital spaces by simply asking the right questions, using the right keywords and key phrases that most are typing today to get to those wine brands in the Napa Valley who are offering itinerary planning, concierge services, car service, um, tour planning, group uh, uh, gatherings. So speaking all of the right languages in the digital spaces is going to also allow you through this new service opportunity to reach new qualified visitors. And in this case, it might be new qualified virtual uh, tasters, virtual event goers, et cetera. So you know, I'm trying to present to you a holistic long-term strategy as you think about 2021 strategic planning, but at the same time, what can you do between now and the end of the year also to encourage uh, some new uh, engagement with our prospective audiences? All right. So let's get into the next point here, how to leverage your brand's unique access points. And this is allowing you to then better engage with concierge style services. And you each in this room, uh, in this today's Zoom room, have very different uh, offerings, very different, uh, I think, you know, business models. I was able to look at the lineup of winery teams here today. And, uh, and I think it's very exciting because that is where you can all become very complementary as referral partners. So some examples of unique access points. You can see our friends here at Cake Bread Cellars under their culinary page, very straightforward about what is possible. Um, and I like this, you know, the Cake Bread family and the culinary team, Brian there has been over here for 30 years managing the culinary department. But what I like about this is that it's not so restrictive that people who've never engaged with their culinary division uh, feel that, you know, it's, it's kind of off limits and maybe only available to the club members, which a lot of times is the case. Cape Bright Sellers has decided that this is an opportunity to uh, open the, this division of their property to private events by asking the right questions, you know, from small bite wine and food pairing sessions to seated wine dinners, in-depth cellar tours. So they're planting the right seeds here, speaking the right language to interested parties. And interested parties today can be people like executive assistants for major tech, uh, you know, CEC levels. Uh, they could be um, trip planners. They could be concierge groups, which I'm gonna touch on just a little bit in the greater Napa Valley. So the more that you can position the right key phrases and ask the right questions in your digital spaces, the faster you're going to be found um, in digital SEO, SEM marketing, but also you're going to be very attractive to that style of planner I just mentioned when they're searching for various options um, within your winery websites. And so some unique access points that uh, many of our clients will extend through concierge style services include things like winemaker vineyard tours. You know, sometimes it's the unpublished experiences, the unpublished uh, tours and private events and tastings that can be the most meaningful with key clients, with private clients, VIPs. And some of you have heard me talk about that in the past. And we, when we look at mining our data and uh, surprising our top 25% of lifetime value customers, getting on the phones or sending personal emails with invitations to things that are unpublished. So when you think about um, some of your unique access points, and as some of you represent properties that have large scale uh, spaces and vineyards and culinary centers, others have very small spaces with a very limited number of people that they can host each month. And I, I recognize that. And so sometimes when you think about the unique access points, it could be from a partnering perspective, getting outside of your property and doing other things that are led or guided um, within your um, winery. And so the, partnerships, the partnership piece can be very exciting. Leveraging uh, the Copia, the Culinary Institute there in Napa, for cooking classes and, and coming alongside your top customers and in such um, organized events. 
And that's just one example. And now there's a handful of cooking classes and cooking centers that you can utilize there in the Napa Valley. Um, vineyard tours, you have it available. Absolutely a wonderful way, even just once a month during the right seasons, you know, maybe six months out of the year, that you're able to um, offer these early morning winemaker vineyard tours. Um, and, you know, wrapping up with maybe a barrel tasting with the winemaker, maybe that's a, a, something that you can offer during harvest in a perfect world. Uh, history tours. So if you're a brand that has a very rich history, and, and you know, when you're thinking about ways of extending your, inter your unique brand storytelling, uh, your unique access points, what kind of history tours would complement your unique history at the winery itself? Maybe sometimes it's getting off property, getting out of the box a little bit, putting together an itinerary, a lineup that's appealing to like-minded audiences from a history angle. Art tours and talks. Our friends over at Jessup Sellers and Ellers and others have realized over the years they have a lot of their super fans or loyalists very interested in things that complement wine, especially when it comes to art, uh, cooking, fashion. And they're on top of this because they ask the right questions. They survey their top customers. They sit down with them on a regular basis. They're very in tune with the interests of their top customers and things that complement the wine experience. And so you can see some points here. If you're one of those wineries in today's audience, then maybe you are limited with the number of people that you can host each month. Maybe it's time to get outside of your space and coordinate a maybe spring art, um, art tour and talk program where maybe you have a re-engagement opportunity with your top customers to come out to book travel, knowing that maybe they're gonna start their morning with you or a host to do an art tour and talk nearby. Uh, maybe two or three different galleries or what have you, or maybe one of the museums, and then wrap up with a beautiful maybe tasting at your property or even a, a lunch, a winemaker lunch, where you might have um, wine on the list. Garden tours. I think this is a very rich piece. Um, I have some clients that have utilized and really done a good job partnering with the garden societies in the Napa Valley. And so if you have a property that really speaks to this, um, I think about, again, our friends at Cake Bread and others, that where there's a commonality uh, with gardeners, master gardeners, and people who just really love that aspect of gardening that complements wine. And so again, a wonderful way to maybe get off property, even in some cases, and tour some of the beautiful master gardens in the Napa Valley. Sustainable organic farming and tours. Um, so this is an interesting topic that's coming up more and more often from qualified young uh, demographics, looking for where the vineyards are, where can we go and see uh, and practice sustainability efforts in the vineyards? Where can we see how organic farming is done? That question has been coming up quite often in the last couple of years for our clients throughout Napa and Sonoma wine countries. Olive oil tours and tastings. This is an interesting thing also, um, not only in the greater Napa Valley, but throughout California. And we see a lot of interest in things, again, that complement the wine experience. Culinary departments, big question comes up about, you know, private experiences with a chef. Do you have a chef? Do you have culinary? Do you have catering, etc.? Winery house rentals, um, especially during COVID, this has been an incredible opportunity for many of our clients to leverage their winery houses, their vineyard properties to be able to accommodate uh, VIP luxury visitors, uh, maybe three to four couples in some cases, who aren't comfortable or able to book hotels. And so I think long-term, this is a very important strategy when offering your unique access points through concierge services, private event space. And again, not one size fits all. I, I understand some of you have restrictions, but for those of you who can do, and make sure that's mentioned. I make sure that there's maybe a sneak peek, a walk by a private event space room, either indoor or outdoor, um, when things reopen fully. I make sure that your hospitality team understands how to leverage through visual cues some of these unique access points that then the concierge can assist with booking. Okay, so that gives you a pretty good feel about, uh, you know, how to begin looking at how to leverage what you have. And maybe some of you are thinking about, I hope that you are, some, of, some additional access points that maybe I haven't touched on. Uh, maybe you offer a car service. Maybe you partner really well with a couple of local resorts or hotels uh, that provide uh, you know, some, some transportation services and things like that. 
um, maybe you've got special pricing or seating to local concerts or events, you know, maybe that's an additional perk um, that your concierge could offer. So in our breakout session, we're going to get together and we're going to really document what all of those mean in just a little bit. But for now, hopefully I've piqued your interest in, in what that can mean for your unique wine brand. All right. So packaging and building itineraries is everything. Um, for those of you who have come to my previous sessions, you know that I'm really big on being mindful of your customer's time. Time today in the luxury wine sales word, world is the number one commodity, okay? So when we can be very mindful of time and in a proactive approach by having the, having the most common itineraries, uh, wine country packages, re recommendations, staff picks, winemaking team picks, all of that dialed in and ready to go, that shows that we've been very thoughtful as a wine brand about what our first time visitors and our long-term loyalists want and need, okay? So this is where you're becoming now an added value outside of the tasting room experience, outside of the annual club party. You're an ongoing now resource um, for these key customer groups. All right, so let's take a quick look at a sample list of services. And so this is pretty common now uh, when we look at how concierge, uh, concierge groups in the Napa Valley uh, cater to luxury travelers, the type of keywords and key phrases they build into their SEO and SEM website content, the type of taglines or headlines in some cases that they'll use in social media advertising. And so easy stuff right here, the first one, winery and restaurant recommendations and reservations. I think that our clients and, and many of you in the Napa Valley are doing a really good job calling ahead um, being consultative, having a list uh, set up and maybe updated every season about your staff picks, maybe family picks, recommendations on restaurants um, and, the, and, and neighboring wineries, right? And when we think about this list, uh, I want to encourage the, those of you in the audience who are that small to mid-sized wine brand to be picky. To take a moment to say, I don't need to be one size fits all. I don't need to uh, appeal to the masses so much. I need to make sure that I am in alignment with my hospitality referral partners because of their core values, because of their complementary offerings, because of their reputation, their iconic um, you know, reputation in some cases, their, uh, their ability to execute high touch luxury experiences, um, customer care. Uh, their high level of uh, hospitality, very complimentary to maybe your wine brand, their family story that's maybe very complimentary. So I think you can see where I'm going here. As you look to better align with your referral partners, maybe sometimes you start with just a handful, uh, maybe five to eight uh, neighboring winery teams that you know will execute well, who will complement your offerings based on the type of experiences they offer, the type of wine varietals, they offer maybe can be very complimentary, okay? So there needs to be trust, there needs to be uh, care and concern um, when selecting who these partners are because they become an extension then of your wine brand in the concierge space. Also, um, small boutique winery tasting reservations. You know, this comes up a lot in searches um, and I'll show you some examples of my search results in just a bit. When I get to things like concierge services Napa Valley, itinerary planning uh, uh, Napa Valley wine region. Small boutique winery tasting reservations is a very important key phrase to embed in uh, your SEO, SEM, your content on your websites to uh, appeal to these audiences looking for more of these high touch services. <clears throat> so again, if you are that small boutique winery, do make sure that you have this phrase dialed in. Transportation services, reservations and coordination. And so you know, it's interesting, I think about Alpha Omega, um, many of the luxury brands there in the Napa Valley who have for years knew who their audience was, knew how they were arriving down to that level. Um, you know, they offer the car service, they offer the um, valet service there, which I think is just such an exceptional touch um, during high season on the busy weekends. And to be able to arrive, especially if you're coming from LA and that whole scene where um, I'm sure as you all know, the last time you visited Hollywood or uh, parts of LA that it's all about um, having that valet service everywhere when you go shopping to different restaurants. 
So that same kind of experience right out of the gate is being offered at Alpha Omega. And I think it sets an interesting tone but I think what it has also done is it allowed that group to understand how people arrive. Um, are they arriving by exojet? Are they arriving by private car service limo most often? Or are they day tripping from home uh, in the greater Bay Area, uh, surrounding areas, Sacramento, et cetera? So again, there's something to be said about being on top of offering transportation services, uh, calling ahead, making reservations, coordination, gives you key insights into who it is you're catering to as well. Sometimes it simply means asking these questions on your booking page. So for many of you who have just started in the last year offering reservation tools uh, through online software, et cetera, maybe the next phase after this session today becomes asking key, key questions about added value, um, you know, a la carte services. So in addition to the one hour VIP tasting and tour they've just booked, um, do they also need assistance with transportation or restaurant reservations while enjoying their time at your property? Okay, those two questions can be very important in better qualifying your visitors and understanding what their goals are for their time in Napa Valley. Guided tastings and tours. Um, are you a brand that has the space to facilitate guided tastings and tours? If so, are you getting more questions about that? Because we're sure seeing it. With the younger demographics, they ask a lot about vineyard tours and tastings. They want to get out, they want to get touchy-feely into a vineyard space very often. Um, and so if you can, again, think about um, the, asking the right questions, making this as a, a piece of your uh, reservation booking page, um, maybe as, as an option. And in some cases, if you're not using software, maybe it's just simply asking the right questions in your contact page, which I'll show you in just a moment. Restaurant reservations, easy stuff, right? Again, I encourage you to start with those uh, restaurateurs who have been loyally uh, pouring your wines. You've been on their list for years. Start with that group, again, when you're putting together your core list of services and referral partners. Private chef or caterers, is this coming up more and more for you um, when groups are making reservations, calling ahead, asking questions? Access to concert or event tickets. I think um, I saw some great success with our clients leveraging Bottle Rock Napa, um, putting together some really fun packages, very thoughtful packages about a three-day weekend in Napa wine country that's really complemented, supported um, the music lifestyle. Vacation rental recommendations and reservations. I think that you're all going to be asked about this probably a lot more during your reopening phases early next year through being spring. I stay very close to destination destination marketing council and other resources monthly right now to look at how uh, consumers across the nation are feeling the confidence ratings about luxury travel uh, retail uh, purchases and decisions um, you know during COVID and post COVID and so you know the day trippers um, the weekend getaways we're seeing much more confidence um, in the last month than we've seen the last you know five months prior um, so it's getting better uh, when we think about holiday travel, um, spring travel next year. And so vacation rentals though, uh, when it comes to Airbnb and Verbo are up across almost every wine region across California, especially. Um, so people are gonna wanna go more private. They're gonna wanna have things that are a little bit more safe and secure feeling um, possibly than staying in hotels initially. So do you have that dialed in? Um, do you have good uh, recommendations that way? Uh, music DJ services sometimes, uh, depending, again, if people are getting their own Airbnb and Verbo. We're seeing this happening more with younger audiences, very qualified techies in you know, mid to late 20s, early 30s, who are coming in pretty heavy with three to four couples, and they are asking about music DJ services for the home, etc. Uh, activities and entertainment recommendations, reservations, so that could be outdoor adventure even, bike rentals, you know, things like that. Personal services is pretty easy stuff. Massage, salon appointments. But look at babysitting. Babysitting is starting to come up a little bit more as well um, for luxury travelers, especially when now we all know family-friendly and pet-friendly recommendations seem to be everything. And, and, and a subset of that starts to become even pet boarding, um, you know, pet and doggy spas in the Napa Valley. So just giving you some thoughts about the type of services. And I'm not saying this is one size fits all and you should do all of this. I'm just giving you a realistic list of services that most luxury buyers are looking into in some sort, some, some way or shape um, when planning travel. 
Okay, in addition to the list of services that are um, often requested, let's look at now the most popular itinerary themes. And you can find a lot of this, by the way, by just conducting your own Google searches about um, concierge services or itinerary planning Napa Valley, right? Napa Wine Country. Okay, so getting into the first, couples retreats, wine weekend. Um, this is an easy, low-hanging fruit piece. If you Google this, uh, couples wine week in Napa Valley, you're going to find a lot of information and ways to uh, engage. So I'm really, I have to say I'm very happy with the uh, clients in today's session. Some of the wine brands in today's session have really embraced SEO and SEM. I can see when I was doing my test Google searches, you're really on top of some of these key phrases when it comes to the top itinerary themes. Corporate retreats, again, wine weekends. And so this is a big one, um, getting uh, the corporate retreat booked and extending the wine weekend to the spouses, significant others, et cetera. Sustainability tours, again, speaking that language to the like-minded traveler around sustainability, especially, again, the younger qualified audiences today. Wine country culinary tour. This one comes up a lot. Um, the culinary complement to uh, the wine experience. And it's interesting to see um, how much luxury buyers are willing to pay for access to uh, this wine country culinary experience. Girlfriends Wine Weekend, Wine Country Adventure Packages. Okay, so and those, um, when we think about also, um, when we look at our clients' data sets, especially in the Napa area, and we start to get into their top 25% of customers and build out their whole CRM profiles and narrow down top preferences, the PIL, preferences, interests, lifestyles. It's interesting to see how often this segment around um, athlete comes up. Sports enthusiasts, outdoor recreation, triathlete, cyclist. Um, there's something to be said about that particular segment as a complement to luxury wine buying. And so if you find that that's something that you have in common as well, then maybe it's time that you start building some fun wine country adventure packages for your particular wine brand, of course, where you're the guide, you're the host. Uh, they start with you and then you help facilitate the itinerary uh, around this adventure program. Um, history and wine tours I've talked about earlier, the spa weekend. I mean, just if you're able to facilitate that well, um, if you have a component even in your outdoor space, I think about our friends over at Cuvée San um, and others where, I mean, you just get out to some of these spaces and you feel like you're at a spa retreat the minute you sit down in wine country, right? So if you have that type of setting that already caters to relaxation, um, to gain away from it all, et cetera, would a spa weekend itinerary be a wonderful complement to what you're doing? Could you group group three to five uh, winery properties nearby with a beautiful resort offering spa services and appeal to that style of luxury buyer. And this goes across so many segments. And this could be client gifts, this could be uh, mother and daughters, you know, couples, it can go on and on, girlfriend weekends, et cetera. Wine train weekend. And so you're always going to, you know, depending on those of you in today's session, some of you already cater to the wine train travelers, you're on the lineup. Um, but then you might also find that in, you know, maybe you're not on that lineup, but a lot of your visitors are now asking about how to get into this wine train or what you think about the wine train experience, right? And so again, when our, our lives return to normal, if you are getting more and more questions about that, build an itinerary around maybe the wine train dinner portion. Maybe that's one component of a long weekend in wine country that starts at your property. Wine country reunions. Um, our friends at the Duckhorn and others, I think they've been really brilliant in, um, in symposiums and conference forums talking about the fact, and this is Carol Reber there, um, talking about the fact that they knew years ago to build success around bringing like-minded customers, members, guests uh, into their properties with a reunion focus. Um, they had a lot of success planting that seed and helping even in some cases facilitate itineraries around a long weekend or week in wine country with a reunion theme. Celebration weekends in wine country. I mean, opening up to thinking about, you know, milestone anniversaries, um, graduations, right? Um, those milestone moments in life, um, you know, that need to be celebrated. Why not appeal 
to that type of visitor with an itinerary that's very thoughtful all about them. And this could mean that you have great resources uh, with resorts, hotels that do go above and beyond to spoil and to recognize when it comes to celebrations. All right, let's get into some examples now and some tools. And so right under your fingertips, you all have access to this beautiful travel itinerary planner at the Napa Valley Vintners website. And I tested it myself. I'm very pleased with the level of service this provides to a variety of visitors. And so if you haven't taken time yet, I suggest that you do. And when you scroll down to the main page and you find here, design your own itinerary to fit your imagination by using the winery map and trip planner. It's very intuit intuitive. I'm gonna show you an example in just a moment of how you can build a lineup of let's say five properties over a day or a weekend and then text the link to interested parties. And so many of you might be thinking about, okay, well, if we have a concierge who I can cross train as our greeter uh, in the tasting room on our busiest days, I can have that person be doing social media and man managing our ratings reviews, maybe making phone calls on Tuesday, Fridays. You're thinking about maybe that cross training opportunity and the tools that person might need to be successful without having to break the budget. I would suggest that you start here. So if you're a small brand, even even a, you know, to a mid-sized brand with not much budget uh, for the initial rollout of this program, start simple. Um, use smart tools that will make it easy for that concierge to plug right into the trip planner tool and then text or email that link directly to your private client, um, your top club member, et cetera. Also, uh, I think Napa Valley, uh, Visit Napa Valley did a really good job with this page because they were very, um, I think, clear about the top searches. This was back in 2018. They were seen across um, their search engines, maybe their website, key phrases, et cetera. And so looking at spas, um, they packaged that really nicely. Uh, Calistoga Hot Springs, you know, some things like that. Lodging options, um, et cetera. So they've done just a really good job overall of uh, catering with the itinerary theme in mind. Also, when we type in concierge services Napa Valley this past week, here's what shows up. And I think, think it's very interesting and a great learning for you in the audience that hasn't done this yet. These brands that show up right here have taken the opportunity to weave into their uh, websites, into their uh, webpage content, their SEO, SEM, probably through Yoast and other tools with their meta tags, the right key phrases and keywords. So when I type concierge services in Napa Valley, they come up on this map, but it also means one more layer a lot of times, going into your Google business page tool and updating that Google business page to also speak the right language. So you see, for example, on the left where it says Napa Valley Tours and Transportation, their website mentions concierge service. So see, it pulls it out from how they've woven this in to their content as well. Um, but do take time if you're interested in reaching new audiences and connecting this level of service to those interested and, and well-qualified visitors, take time to update not only your website, but all of your digital outlets, your Google My Business page, your Instagram, Facebook, um, any of your link building, anywhere that you have a directory listing. So your Napa Valley Vintners member page, etc. Okay, if you have referral partners already listing you on their website, make sure that you also include as a key phrase, concierge itinerary planning services. All right, and so congratulations to those of you showing up in this lineup. I think you're doing a really good job of appealing to um, the right audiences through all of your digital uh, work. Let's get into now gems of Napa Valley. So it's interesting when I sit down with clients, many times they've never heard of GEMS. And so GEMS is a group um, that was organized, I want to say going on 15 to 20 years ago now in the greater Napa Valley. And it was a group of like-minded winery managers and owners who said, you know, we want to be able to be more consultative and provide some concierge services recommendations to our top customers uh, when they start to really warm up with our wine brand. This is a wonderful re-engagement tool opportunity to leverage. And also you'll see in this lineup, many of these brands cater to private clients. Um, to those, you know, and, and you hear me talking about private clients a lot today. And why, why is that, right? Well, sometimes concierge services is not one size fits all. Sometimes it means 
then maybe you mine your top 20, 25% of current customer data to identify who might be a good uh, candidate for offering concierge services. And maybe your first couple of years, you focus just on that core group. And what's the why behind that? To ensure long-term loyalty, longer lifetime values and relationships, but also to ensure higher levels of re-engagement and referral business through those key customers, right? And so anyway, this is just, again, one example. I'm gonna go ahead and click through this one so that you can get a feel for where to find this resource. Um, if I just type in Gems Napa Valley, I see the whole listing um, of the websites that are a part of this. I can see how that it looks when I get to the hall. And so they have the map up that shows, again, the listing of those uh, GEMS members to make it really easy, again, as kind of a trip planner tool here. In addition, on the left, it talks about what the GEMS membership is. And Sandra, so many, yes. Sorry, your screen is blank right now. Oh, goodness. Okay, let me try this again. Sometimes that happens, I know, when I share my screen. Okay, it should show, show up now. I see green. Yes, we're good. We can see Hall. Okay, thank you so much. You didn't miss much, I promise. And um, when I got here, I landed to this page and showed you on the right then the interactive map with the listing of the GEMS members. So again, a nice way to kind of build um, some tools that you can send right out to your interested parties. Many of our luxury clients in Napa Valley will leverage this um, as a way of uh, an additional perk, um, a surprise and delight for their top maybe 10, 15% of clients, of, of private clients or top customers. And so it's not something that they need to actually pay for. Um, they don't need to join a formal membership to get access to the GEMS members. Um, it's one of those private things that's done and so Hall can say to maybe some of their top customers, we're so excited to introduce you to some of our um, GEM winery partners in the, the um, greater Napa Sonoma areas, right? And so it's a re really a nice way of extending um, the uh, partnerships here, um, making sure that your top customers are more ingrained with what's happening within the Napa Sonoma wine regions and obviously re-engaging at a much higher level. So when you have time, check it out. When you scroll to the bottom here, you can download a PDF and the PDF really gives you a good feel for what these GEM members offer as a part of those additional perks. So if I scroll down, I can see, for example, our friends over at Chapelet, their GEMS benefit is very specific, a private by appointment tour of Pritchard Health. What a treat, followed by a seated cellar tasting for up to four guests. Um, it talks about the value, so it's a discounted experience available with special private access to these gym members. Okay, so I'm not going to spend too much time here today, but you can see our friends over at Clos Duval and Frog's Leap. I've really put together some very thoughtful offers appealing again to that ultra luxury, that high uh, net buyer. All right, so I'm going to move us back over now, hopefully, to the proper screen share. Back over to my presentation. And we'll just bring that back up here where we left off. And you should all see that in just one moment. I'll just make sure I am sharing properly. All right, and can you all see now back over to my presentation? Yes, we can see Access Napa Valley. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wonderful. So I just left um, the last screen. I'm going to skip around a little bit. Just left the gems of Snappa Valley. And so again, uh, this is a group and maybe some of you might be using this concierge service. But when you look at the key phrases uh, and questions that they pose, they're appealing to a very specific audience. Access, luxury, private okay so when we get into this example which i'm going to make sure my screen does share properly once again in google chrome okay here we go um you'll see i encourage you as you have time to sit down with yourself your respective team as a follow-up from today's session explore some of the services and um talk points that each of these concierge groups pose in their their websites i think that you can learn a lot quickly about um, the type of access they're truly giving. Okay, so the host came from 
the French Laundry. So that's always a really nice beginning, right? Um, and so you're going to see later in my presentation where I start to pose the idea of whether or not it makes most sense for you to launch a concierge services department internally and cross train your current staff or whether it makes more sense for you to outsource to a group like Access Napa Valley and others. Um, so a lot of these groups can take a lot of the heavy lifting off of your hands if needed. Again, it goes back to the core principles that I talked about earlier though. Um, do they share your similar core values? Um, do they have a similar client list in mind? Um, are they complementary in types of, in terms of the services experiences? Are they reliable and reputable, right? So if you do decide to go down this path, for example, of using an outsourced concierge company in the Napa Valley, make sure that you ask those right questions, set up an interview, and then take it from there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do a new share now back over to my presentation, which you'll see in just a moment. Okay, hopefully you're all seeing that again now. Um, now I'm on Concierge of the Valley. Again, very similar to access in terms of what is available in, in the lineup of services, et cetera. What I really like about this example, and so I do wanna make sure I take a moment to share my screen once again. Okay, great, we should all see that now. Um, I do like that in there, not only do they talk about, about, about us and services, but they now have added this uh, test, the vacation rentals right next to their testimonials. So they, they're on top of it. They understand the vacation rentals right now the last six months, you know, pandemic and beyond are gonna be very important for a variety of luxury travelers, uh, wine uh, collectors, et cetera. So think about, again, the keywords, key phrases they're using, explore their list of services, et cetera, because you learn a lot about what's most important to this type of client base. In addition, I encourage you to look at the testimonials. What do consumers have to say about these kind of offerings? And actually this page is being a little slow, so I might have to move this on. But there's some great content, some great tools that you can uh, explore quickly and easily. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop there. Back over now to the presentation. Okay, you'll see my screen here in just a moment. And now is live. Okay, great. And if you have any problems, again, let me know. But I'm gonna continue where we just left off. And we are getting close to our break, I promise. I um, just wanna wrap up on this last, the last couple of pieces. Um, you'll also see in my handout, um, MG Concierge Services, again, destinations and travel. So the complete trip planning. Um, they're very um, you know, aware of what luxury-minded independent or group travelers want. Um, I just think they've done a really good job offering right out of the gate text service, uh, phone service, a very high touch, very personal itinerary planning. Okay, um, it's important also as you think about which model you decide to go with, um, that you again, look at marketing to your current customers as well as to new audiences. So from a strategic perspective, once you get all your ducks in a row, we'll go through this in the worksheet in just a bit, then I would encourage you to think about two different audiences that you'd want to introduce the services to and how you're going to market to those audiences, okay? In some cases, our clients have embraced this private client services program. And some of you might be intrigued by what that means. And sometimes it's those customers who will never convert to club membership, um, but have been long-term loyalists who will come in every time and buy $1,000 plus in wine, um, who are really big on sending their clients and partners um, for reservations and private experiences, right? So it's identifying whether or not you have the right type of client base already in play to introduce a formal private client services division. And so what happens here, a lot of times when we look at introducing then the concierge services to our current customer base, we might look at the top 20% of club members by lifetime value, but we also might look at those who qualify well as private clients. And so right out of the gate, you want to define what your minimum threshold would be to unlock then the concierge style services. In addition to that, direct access then to a private client manager. This can also be the concierge, um, you know, wherever you decide to go with that. 
Um, but at the same time, what you want to do is make sure that they understand what type of services that uh, gives them access to. Uh, everything from private experiences at the winery property itself, uh, access to book in office or private tasting events, if that's something that you're able to facilitate. So this person, this private client, client manager, or in some cases concierge, unlocks then access to a variety of services that had not been offered before. And that is key to making this program successful with your current customer base. All right, VIP invitations to events and private wine collections. So the question came up, I think it was the Cuvus Cuve Sun group earlier. How can we better attach what we've already built with our new concierge services program to our current customers, right? And so I think a lot of times it's, it's being very specific, it's being very transparent um, with how you then message this new um, service. And sometimes it's not one size fits all. It's not a huge, put it up on our website and do an email blast. Um, actually where I've seen it go really well on the opposite side is to again, select that core group of top 20, 25% of ideal current customers and then privately extend your new concierge services, private client manager services. Uh, and then reaching new audiences really means going back and having those ideal key phrases around the types of experiences, itinerary planning uh, and services that your unique wine brand will be offering. Here's an example also when we sit down, and I'm, I'm doing a lot today in two hours uh, to give you just kind of high level on um, best practices and some proven methods and things to consider. But a lot of times we'll sit down over six weeks or two months and really build out this whole program with our clients. And so when we get to this point also of deciding, you know, time being the number one commodity for your staff as well. So if you have somebody you know you can cross train to work as this concierge also slash private client services manager, then what, what's the qualification um, conver converting workflow going to look like? Um, have this really well thought out. Make it so that the stakeholders own the decision here um, and that you're in charge of what that minimum qualifier should be to unlock these type of services. And so in some cases, it can be $5,000 and up as far as lifetime value, just taking those uh, customers first, deciding if you're going to group in members or just everybody outside of your club membership because maybe you already have a, 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 you know, a member manager, uh, et cetera. So again, not one size fits all. You need to decide on what's going to be best for your group. Um, also, in some cases, we train staff in the front line and your tasting room hosts that if a first-time customer or a couple comes in and spends $500 or more on their first order but doesn't convert to club, to always, especially now um, through COVID, luckily with reservation tools, make sure you've got a name and email associated at the minimum to that order if it's not a ship to. Um, and then attach quickly a private client contact type to that new customer that new order. And um, that's going to allow then what I call the Tuesday, Wednesday morning workflow to kick in where the hospitality manager, or in some cases it can be your concierge, is personally reaching back out to that well-qualified first time visitor to offer private client services, concierge style services. Okay, you're speaking the right language right out of the gate when you're proactively reaching back to that, that type of buyer. And so when you get your hand out, I encourage you to take a look at this. See if you, if you like this workflow, are there things that you would tweak or do differently? But these are the typical steps that we look at. And whenever you can take a local audience of qualified buyers also from a first time visit to invite them to come back in for maybe a glass of wine and a small nosh meetup with a private client manager, there's very little um, commitment at that point. You already know they're very well qualified. Maybe it's the first time that you're introducing the service to your past customers that meet, meet that $5,000 lifetime value, et cetera. So it's really just a way to get to know each other, to introduce the services, to foster the relationship, and then take them on and really uncover the path that they wanna go on. Um, are they an influencer? Do they own their own business? Are they connected heavily into the corporate world? Do they have a lot of needs for private uh, experiences or client events, partner events, et cetera? So many ways for you to be able to then take this and customize it to your own liking. You'll see in step three though, uh, when if you do, if you're able to offer any kind of private event, um, private access, private tastings, and many of you I know cannot offer events uh, on, on property, but maybe you're facilitating them at a partner space, at a resort, a hotel, a restaurant, in a private um, uh, space at the restaurant. 
So kind of think out of the box a little bit when you think about how to cater to, cater to private client services and don't get stuck in your limitations. Because when you can continue to re-engage and be that dedicated resource with your list of concierge services, the possibilities can be endless for some of these key buyers. My friends over at Peller Estate in Canada, over in Niagara on the Falls, a really great example how they've embraced the concierge services and marketed it through their website. So again, you'll find their link here in your handout. But don't forget to market, right? So don't forget to update your website and provide links to all your referral partners right out of the gate. Um, so once you have this ready to go, maybe it's your top three to five itineraries. You've got your content now woven and really nice into your wet winery website. Um, from an SEO, SEM perspective, you can start to launch some great digital marketing programs to encourage new audiences within your respective wine region to uh, engage, to convert. All right. Other examples of uh, key phrases and questions to consider in the digital spaces. And so itineraries, Napa Winery, e Etude comes up and it's a paid ad space, it's not cheap. So congratulations uh, to those uh, folks there for taking the initiative to say, I need to invest uh, annually in this digital ad space to then appeal to a like-minded group of visitors coming from, I love how they did this by the way, um, they're targeting geographically to the greater Bay Area. One, they're talking about being one hour outside of San Francisco um, and, you know, kind of what the possibilities could mean uh, uh, for planning the getaway. So really well done. Um, they mentioned socially distanced, et cetera. Of course, Navigate Valley Vintners comes up. On the right here, Provenance. Again, um, we're open. So when I type in concierge services, I get a feeling right away that they're going to take good care of me. Um, that I can call ahead, reach out, and have them help me with itinerary and trip planning, Sterling Vineyards here as well. Okay, so if you're looking for some inspiration, some examples, you're going to find quite a few uh, in the world of Google today. This is our 10-minute break. I will come back at you here at uh, 1022. Thank you. There we are. Now I'm plugged back into my AirPods. It'll be just a minute. And we'll okay, Jesse, just a quick test on audio. How does the sound? Sounds good. Thanks, Sandra. Excellent. Okay, welcome back, everybody, from the break. I'm going to go ahead now and resume screen share and pick right back up from where we left off in just a minute and actually do you see my screen okay there jesse yep all good okay then we're going to go ahead and pick right back up here okay so we've got about uh 40 a little under 40 minutes left together so quite a bit uh, more to uh, finish up on i'm excited to get us into our breakout session here in just a bit um, but before that, let's talk about, you know, you've heard me uh, mention the right questions, right? And uh, the key phrases and keywords today are very important when appealing to the right audiences with concierge services, itinerary planning. And in many cases, what ends up happening is that you might have these three to five itineraries that you come up with that are very uh, important uh, with your unique access points and, and really spot on. And you might even start to offer these concierge style services or product client services to your current top customers. But what often happens is customizations will be requested, right? And so maybe they wanna modify some of these packages or itineraries, or maybe they have other requests. Uh, if it's, let's say a club member celebrating a 50th anniversary or 50th birthday or what have you. So I'm gonna move on here to some examples. So some sample questions, and again, a great place to uh, pose these questions would be at your reservation page on your website. So if you're offering uh, reservations, seated experiences, uh, whether it be, you know, talk, uh, seller pass, any kind of reservation software, or just a simple contact page with a form, a visit page, these are the questions that I encourage you to pose. Again, map these to your respective situations. But access to our vineyard vacation rentals, interested in booking maybe our, vaca our vineyard vacation rental, right? If that's something that you have to offer, maybe you have partnerships with those that offer some special wine country vacation rentals. 
uh, access to our list of preferred partners. And so very often this comes up about, you know, what to do next, where to go. And so by having a list of preferred partners, uh, preferred, you know, hotels, restaurants, uh, drivers, et cetera, again, you can have it set up as a link, a hidden page on your website and be able to either text that or email that to any interested parties. Uh, can we build a custom itinerary? So that's a very simple question to ask. Maybe you wanna walk before you run a little bit and test out the concierge style approach, itinerary building approach. So maybe at the reservation page or contact or visit page on your website, you start to ask this question and look at how many times then people take you up on it. Um, maybe they're emailing the concierge at xyzwinery.com asking what this could be as far as itinerary planning. So once you start to see an uptick then in those kind of requests, you know it's time to make that available either through uh, you know, a high touch uh, concierge specialist, maybe you're outsourcing it, maybe it's sometimes as simple as the member manager or hospitality manager funneling some of those special requests and having some preset themes. Again, a nice PDF document or a URL that you can reference as a follow-up email. Even better yet, a phone call. Um, where you could be advisory and kind of get to know your audience a little bit more. Private event and small group bookings. And now it's interesting how for a long time I know in Napa, just because of the constraints, um, many smaller brands especially had to kind of shy away from small groups altogether. Um, however, uh, we see now more and more of uh, the younger demographic traveling in packs, you know, this pack mentality. And so being able to speak that language again through high touch concierge services itinerary planning is going to be very important. And so if you have the space where you can facilitate small groups, private event spaces, private tasting spaces, an event could, by the way, mean um, a two or three hour uh, wine and food experience, a pairing or maybe a lunch um, that includes some, something special, uh, maybe some exploration into the vineyards, a tour, uh, barrel samplings, et cetera. Can we assist with car service? I mean, that's just really simple stuff at the booking page if you wanna start slowly and uh, help make recommendations um, with car service, help get that dialed in for them. Uh, and again, maybe even access to a private chef. Again, if that's a unique access point, we can extend. So these are some sample questions. Again, I can I ask you to consider when we look at our friends over at Alpha Omega, you know, here's a great example, right? Within them, the contact page of how they've done just that. And so, you know, here's the kind of the basics. And what they know is that when they're catering to luxury buyers, yes, they can uh, sign up and, and book their reservations in their visit page. But in addition to that, the people, the administrative assistants, the executive assistants, uh, the trip planners, uh, you know, catering to VIPs, they're looking at the contact page a lot. And they're looking at ways about how to get in touch for something custom, for something private, for something high touch. And so they've been very clear here about what to do for that. Um, so they talk about the reservations required for all tastings and how to book that with a nice link here. But then for private tasting experiences, please contact our concierge. So do make sure that you have your page updated at the very least to extend these type of options, these type of services with a dedicated uh, email address. All right, so it might mean that you need to, to create a concierge email if you don't already have one. Uh, giving the option of booking. Sometimes that's just the best way to start testing and sampling whether or not you've got the right audience to offer these services. Uh, position booking assistance questions at the reservation page. I think I just love these two, you know, car service, restaurant bookings. So again, added value uh, at the time of, of you know, their, their booking, et cetera. Okay, mining your current customer list, you know, where do you begin there? And so here are some recommendations on things to look for. Um, so if you decide you want to start building out now marketing messages and information services for your current customer list, how do you identify who they are? Um, who are the ideal private clients or the ideal concierge style uh, customers? So a lot of times there's some clues. Corporate clients have booked in the past, corporate orders. Sometimes it's interesting to look at how many of our clients have these ship to orders, especially around mid-October through December, to a corporate address. And then you look at the, per the purchaser and they actually are the owner, the CEO, um, executive assistant in some cases, um, you know, C-level. 
And so take time to mine your data and look at how many corporate clients you might already have in your database. Um, maybe those corporate clients that have come in and booked some small private tastings or events in the past. Influencers. And so I'm not talking about paid influencers and social media influencers. I'm talking about those who you've documented in your system who are influential. Um, heads of their own uh, foundation sometimes, local business uh, communities, chambers, uh, et cetera. Uh, out of state VIP customers. I mean, it's just, if you were to start there and if you're a brand that has more than, let's say, you know, 60, 50, 60% of your members or your allocation members, your loyalists out of state, it is definitely time to look at offering some type of high touch itinerary planning, concierge style services to encourage re engagement, especially in 2021. It's going to be a little difficult next year to get those out-of-state customers re-engaged. The more that you could be proactive and encourage a safe visit, maybe through booking of Airbnbs, uh, winery houses, private properties, et cetera, you're gonna be in better shape in speaking their language. Uh, referral business, referral business uh, by partner, right? And so I'll show you some examples of that in a minute, but if you've done a really good job tracking and training your staff how to, at every order, track the referral partner, You've got some wonderful history to go back to the last two, three years, maybe five years, and look at your type, your top referral business sources. And so you can start to really get a feel right there about how to market back to those audiences first. Uh, any new services that you're offering, uh, itineraries, et cetera. All right, uh, tip, leverage your restaurants and hotels where you already have placement, right? I mean, that's low hanging fruit right there. Start there to continue to build loyalty and then track every referral at the order level. If, you, if you're hearing me talk about this today and your, your group has not started doing it yet, it's not that hard. Um, especially now with many of you either using iPads, mobile point of sale, or catering to very small groups each month based on visitation restrictions. Okay, let's go, uh, oops. Now we are ready for the breakout session and worksheet and so I'm gonna um, walk us through this uh, at first and ask if there's any questions before we, we dive right in. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull that up. All right, so you should all see now, let me make sure I'm in the right screen share. Do you see that okay? Uh, let's see, I don't think you see it. Let me go back into this particular, there we go. Now you see the document in front of you all. And so I've designed this document um, as kind of a brainstorming exercise. So for those of you who are with a group right now in today's session, um, a great opportunity to take the next 20 minutes and really brainstorm together as you're answering these questions. Um, for those of you who are by yourself and you're thinking about ways of improving or launching a brand new program, I've asked a lot of questions here about how you would go about that, if this is really going to be a good fit for you. So you'll see that there's three sections. And so one, define your ideal concierge customers. And so it goes back to what I just talked about, about maybe it's just you start with two groups. Maybe it's your current uh, group of uh, top LTV members and then non-members. Maybe you just start there in attaching now these services as a re-engagement opportunity, as an added uh, perk. Um, and maybe also you decide that uh, it's a strategy for you to reach new audiences in the digital spaces uh, with conversion maybe to some high touch virtual experiences with winemaking or with um, members of a family in an effort to then hopefully extend an invitation personally to visit in the spring with a custom itinerary, right? So there's many ways that you can go about this. Um, so you'll see the questions that I post here. Um, this is an interesting one. Maybe you need to take this back even with you post workshop, but what are the top three to five recommendations that visitors and or guests ask of your hospitality team or member services team? So, you know, you need to pretty much know is it that they're constantly being asked about how to schedule one of those balloon rides? Is it about the train? Is it about going and visiting some natural uh, sites, uh, outdoor adventure? So just try to fill that into the best of your ability today. Go back and conduct some additional research. Um, same thing here. I, I like to find out how often also when, uh, and this is again, you know, outside of pandemic, but how often were your guests who were booking online using the reservation tools, et cetera, actually emailing or calling to ask for special favors, um, customization, special requests that go outside of just booking the reservation. Things like car service, recommendations for uh, restaurants, hotels, um, babysitting, dog uh, kennels, et cetera. 
So try to the best of your ability again to fill that out. Um, question four, I think it's gonna be very important as you think about the future of your concierge services program. Do you need to be more family friendly and pet friendly? Does that need to be a part of the mix as well as large groups, okay? So you might decide right out of the gate, we could never accommodate any of these three. Uh, so just go ahead and put not applicable in that particular uh, section. And then I get to the who. And so this is where, in a little bit, I'll also give you some examples of outsourcing versus uh, cross training. Um, but here, you know, you might want to, it's not one size fits all. So is there somebody you can start to cross train? Is there somebody who's already going to be an ideal fit? Great, if not, uh, indicate that and I'll talk with you in just a little bit about ideas for how to get people trained up. Section two, define your ideal suite of services. So based on some of the information I've provided earlier, hopefully you started to kind of think about what could we come out of the gate with as far as our top itineraries, our list of services, our unique access points. And this gets into then um, the team effort, uh, you know, and how that's going to look, who's going to be involved. And then number three is, will you have to add any a new services, technologies, phone support, tech service. Um, are those going to be tools that you'll need to introduce to take care of more high touch luxury clients, doctors, attorneys, techies, et cetera. Section three talks about mainly your, your focus is on your partnerships. And so some of you already have these well dialed in, others need to think about really developing this from the ground up. And so I've given you some core questions to consider here. Any questions about the questionnaire and how to complete this? Are we gonna be graded on our responses here, Sandra? Do we get a letter grade? <laughs> you will not. <laughs> okay. Everybody gets a star in my, in my class here. Um, but what I would love to hear, if you, if you feel comfortable typing it in chat or what have you, I'd love for the audience to collaborate a little bit, to share ideas, to ask questions. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you all have very unique and different business models. So please do uh, reach out. That's, that's great. And uh, remind us again, so we're thinking, uh, what's the time frame to, for this? We have now the... about 15 more minutes. And so we will come back here at about, let's, let's call it uh, 1050. Okay, great. Okay, and again, this is your time. And so... Um, many of my past workshop attendees love this little timeout to just think on your own, kind of start to fill out some of this worksheet and then go back to your respective teams and, for, and further build this out. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause now and watch the chat window. That's great. And I know folks are busy, uh, but this is really a good way to engage and actually make sure that, um, you know, your program moves forward. So we encourage everyone to take part in this part of the process. Yes, absolutely. And I do have a, a couple of private messages asking if I'll be sending the PowerPoint handout afterwards. Yes, you will receive the entire PowerPoint presentation with those resource links. And then another question about the cost or budget uh, and communicating the cost or inquire about the guest budget. And so, yes, I will touch on that in the next section here as well. Sandra, will you be asking um, vintners to maybe share some of their responses to this worksheet? Please, um, whoever is comfortable, a uh, good opportunity would be if you're comfortable unmuting, feel free to. This is a great time to unmute, ask questions, share ideas, or if you're more comfortable typing into the chat window, go ahead and do that.
Okay, and just a reminder to the audience that uh, we have almost another nine minutes or so here. This is your time to ask any questions. Um, if you have any thoughts, feedback, want to bounce anything off of me, now is your time. Yes, Sandra, I actually had a question. Yes. Um, what are some of the incentive-based programs for actual concierge themselves that you're seeing also when dealing with outside companies and, and then for motivating them to have those relationships? Yeah, really good question. And it has it's arranged greatly. Um, so again, in some cases, depending on the size of our client, um, like our mid or large size clients will simply um, have a full-time position um, that is typically paid uh, for multiple um, areas of responsibility. So it could be that that full-time person manages the concierge desk three days a week, uh, Friday through Sundays, and in addition to that um, also supports uh, the concierge services with trip planning um, as well as social media management, uh, rating review platform updates, outbound phone calls sometimes to confirm appointments, et cetera, member follow-up. So the mid to large size clients that we support, typically that's a really good model. Um, and in the last year, year and a half, that person now is also responsible in some cases for live chat. Um, so where, as far as the financial responsibility, typically under the umbrella as a full-time employee, there's a pretty decent salary included for all those services. Um, but then um, in addition to that, for the live chat specialist, we do encourage our clients to build a very clear uh, incentive program, a bonus program, um, commission program for each of the attainables. And so one, a uh, conversion from live chat to a live phone call, uh, from the live phone call, um, play and booking of reservations, uh, wine sales, club signups, uh, membership management uh, responsibilities, et cetera. And so there's typically five to eight conversion paths that we do um, re recommend that our clients pay those live chat specialists on. Under that umbrella, of course, as you can see, it becomes very easy then to facilitate a lot of the concierge services, make recommendations about travel, trip itineraries, etc. Our small clients on the opposite side, um, sometimes it's literally the owner. Um, sometimes it is the hospitality manager for a small brand who's taking up some of this responsibility um, with the goal of um, acquisitions, with the goal of uh, encouraging new visitation, um, higher levels of re-engagement, higher le levels then of wine sales and the second visit on. Um, and so that falls under the overall sales focus for the hospitality manager at our small to mid-sized brands. And so I'll get into tracking in just a little bit about how then you can measure success very clearly um, with your two audiences. One, your connected audience who you've extended these services to, and then your new target audiences through digital strategies as well. There is a question that came in through the chat, Sandra, uh, from Frank asking, uh, how common is it for wineries to have full-time concierge service? Mm -hmm. So our large wineries, our large luxury clients, um, very common today. Um, especially with in the last two to three years um, with much more competition than we've ever seen. Our large brands, our multi-property, our brands that have two to three properties under their umbrella absolutely have concierge services. Um, however, not available to the masses. Um, in many cases, they're attaching the concierge services to their highest level of lifetime value customers and to the highest level of experiences. So for those booking um, private events, uh, tours with culinary or what have you, uh, right out of the gate that includes access to the concierge services and helping with everything from trip planning to um, all of the event details. And so in my earlier point too, with my mid to large sized um, brands specifically, the private client services piece has really been an evolution in the last couple of years of offering these concierge style services. 
Um, it's given many of our clients the insights needed to realize that, you know, many will not convert to membership today, but continue to want special uh, service, um, dedicated access, VIP treatment. And so, you know, being able to be proactive then and attach private client services with those specific audience audiences has been very fruitful. It's opened up things like corporate wine tastings, both now virtually and in person. It's opened up much more additional um, access to friends and clients and coworkers of, of very well qualified um, customers, VIPs, to then encourage um, dedicated access through private client services. So it's very trackable um, in many cases um, within the private client services division. Little things too I will touch on, um, you know, if you have a greeter station, uh, are you thinking about a greeter station when you reopen down the road or what have you, um, or even during high season, Friday through Sunday, you know, that greeter station can be very powerful, especially when you're uh, as a visual cue to luxury visitors. Um, we all know that we stay at the Ritz, the Four Seasons, any type of luxury resort space, it's very common to have that concierge desk, that reader desk available as a resource, a welcoming space, kind of a local brand ambassador. So I really encourage you to start there in many cases with monitoring the type of questions and requests that your greeter gets when adding a new greeter station to the front. Um, really over the first three to six months, stay very close to um, those type of requests, and that's going to give you the insights you need also to be effective in building out your list of concierge services. Sometimes also if, we, if our client doesn't have a lot of time or budget to fully flesh this out, but they do add the greeter station, we will recommend that they have really nice um, links available because most visitors today don't want a bunch of handouts and paper recommendations, but if you can text quickly and easily or email, it's mainly happening through text or even email a link, to your recommendations page, again, that private URL. That's a wonderful tool for your greeter to be able to extend quickly and for the guests to feel really well thought of. Um, taking some time also to call ahead to a restaurant. You have that greeter trained um, and able to support the tasting host, the wine educators uh, with a quick call ahead. That's just such an elegant, wonderful way to make those guests feel, again, like VIPs. Um, like insiders. Um, and so again, having those relationships dialed in with the people that you can call at each of your outlets is really key. So just another minute or so on the worksheet. Any other questions coming in um, about the worksheet? Any feedback so far? Do you all like this process of using the worksheet, not only in the breakout sessions today, but going back to your respective teams to further develop your programs. I think it's great, Sandra. It's, it's nice to have something tangible. Great. Thank you, Jesse. Okay. There is my alarm to, thank you, Owen. Um, there is my alarm to remind myself it's time to start winding up. I've got about 10 minutes left. And so I want to make sure that I get you all out on time. I know you've got a lot going on in the day ahead. And so I'm going to now switch my screen share to the presentation and wrap up with the last two topics. If you have more questions following today's session, you'll find my email address on the last page. Feel free to reach out. I uh, always want to help um, make sure that you have all the resources you need. Um, to be successful here. All right, next up, you're going to see my screen here in just a moment, and we're going to talk about reasonable goals and results. Okay, so you'll see that here now. And we'll go back into full screen. There we are. The big question, right? What's reasonable um, out of the gate? So if you've never launched a con, you've never offered concierge services, it's all very brand new to you and your teams. Um, I say, you know, walk before you run. So you hear me talk a lot about testing things out first, um, and getting to know who your current audience is and what their expectations are, what their custom requests are, uh, etc. 
uh, asking the right questions in the contact pages and so forth. Maybe even just having an informal gathering virtually in a fun Zoom meeting with some of your long-term loyalists to ask questions that they uh, of concierge services or itinerary um, you know tools they'd be interested in. Okay, so um, some things to consider there. So some reasonable goals um, when we work with clients who really fully flesh this out, been very focused about their two audiences, both uh, current audience and new audiences. We look at about a 20% increase in current customer bookings in the first 90 days of launch. Um, this is being very proactive, personally reaching out to the current customer base, letting them know these services are available. Um, the added value and perks that they can provide as far as access, you know, private uh, experiences, um, et cetera. So we look at a 20% increase in the first 90 days of bookings. So a great re-engagement strategy for the current customer base. And then in addition to that, we do look at improved re-engagement opportunities with members and VIPs in the first 90 days of launch. And some really important measures there is how well do those members and VIPs respond to personal calls, emails, maybe if you're, if you're texting, how do they respond to these kind of invitations? What kind of questions do they have or ideas about uh, what these VIP private experiences could entail? In some cases, we've been able to help our clients facilitate things like private virtual tastings and events uh, with the winemaker in the last uh, several months. Uh, dropping, you know, getting the, the, the kits drop shipped to a variety of clients or partners and providing a corporate virtual experience with winemaker. When you think about mid-October coming up here pretty soon, the big deadline to get all of your holiday gifting and offers out and marketed, think about this year ways to leverage the concierge services, a private client manager, to help facilitate private virtual tastings with, it could be winemaking, or it could be a family member, or an advanced level wine educator, if that's a part of your offering. 20 to 30% increase in new customer bookings through referrals. Um, we are very clear about that. I mean, I think in, in the first 90 days, we wanna really start to look at how we're monitoring and measuring success at the order level, um, at the um, reservation software level or a reservation form level. So being very clear and tracking those referral partners into the, the new uh, records is very important. 10 to 20% increase in website traffic within 90 days of launch. So when it comes to reaching new audiences through digital marketing, updating your website with the proper keywords, key phrases, list of services, et cetera, maybe launching some social media or Google digital marketing ads, updating your Google business page, then we want to make sure that first 90 days are very close to those key phrases and referral sources that generated new traffic then and hopefully meant also additional reservations, wine purchases, contact forms completed, etc. All right, just a quick example also, you want to train your staff on how to track referrals if you're already not doing this. So this is one quick example from Wine Direct. Very similar environment in almost every order management system in the DTC wine space today. Um, you need to set up a list of your sales attributes um, to track referral partners. This is reportable, very clean and easy right into an Excel document week after week. And so it takes just a few minutes at the order level with whether admin panel or point of sale view, it's very similar right there. Just that quick drop down takes like literally 10 seconds. In addition, you'll want to define what your private client management or concierge services management workflow is going to look like. So when you start to engage with your current customers, especially, you want to go backwards a little bit and you want to start adding notes and information about their preferences. If you're booking on behalf of them and putting together itineraries or calling ahead, note that because these preferences for Angelina Jolie, for example, that she needed babysitting, that she wanted a full day, day, day uh, spa service at the V. So all of these things, she's vegan, uh, will help you next time as you're catering to Angelina and her posse, right? Um, and maybe the contact type, uh, so private client. If you like the idea about new customers coming through now your virtual tastings, through friends of family or what have you, or down the road through your tasting experiences on property, um, have a minimum qualifier flyer and train your staff on what that is. If it's $500 first purchase or a thousand, they get associated to private client services. Make sure that everybody's trained on the front line, but then on Tuesday mornings, you've got a workflow in place to run that report by contact type of new customers in your system. And typically the hospitality manager, director, 
if it's a small brand, it could be a family member, reaches out personally to thank and to re-engage, uh, extending the private client services. Okay, use smart tools. Here's an example of how I put together um, my itinerary for five properties uh, using the Napa Valley Vintners itinerary tool. I think it's brilliant. And um, there's a little area on the right when you're done where you can share this as a link right into a text, right into an email. So maybe you're, if you're wanting to start then, you know, just right out of the gate, simple tools without a huge budget, train the concierge, whoever's going to manage that process, how to use this tool and then send out suggested itineraries based on their interests. Powerful tool. Thank you to the Napa Valley Vintners team for putting that together. Um, if you have more sophisticated needs than just recommending the tasting room uh, to visit, etc., maybe also you start to think about fully fleshed out itinerary planner software. So here's a trip creator tool that I thought was very intuitive, very dynamic, bringing in rich content like SEO, SEM images um, into the property view for each of the um, visits. Uh, in the itinerary in, in the calendaring uh, tool. Um, this can be uh, sent out as a, a shareable link or downloaded to a PDF. So I think this is a wonderful tool to research if you wanna take this a little bit further with fully extending uh, itinerary planning uh, for a big weekend or week in wine country. Okay, dedicating time, staff, and budget obviously is critical. And so as I mentioned earlier, there's some great insights as to what brands in your region are, are requesting when it comes to qualifications, when, it, when they talk about areas of responsibility. So I've just added some here. I encourage you again to look at the link in this resource uh, for the current job listings. Uh, customer service, um, you know, you can see that in all the listings that I did a quick audit this last week, it's very customer service, very um, uh, hospitality friendly. Why knowledge is important, but not as a huge priority. And so somebody who might even have past experience in booking uh, reservations, working at a concierge desk at a hotel or a restaurant, that could be a good um, uh, prospect if you're looking to hire externally. I talked about how to cross train also internally. Here are some tips to consider when you go back with your respective teams. Um, is it maybe somebody in membership or guest services who wants to take on some additional responsibility? Is it a social media or marketing admin who's only maybe working part-time who you can give some more responsibility to with some associated revenue goals, re revenue attainment goals, member management, retention goals, et cetera. Visitor center, host or greeter. A lot of times that person's maybe working two or three days a week during high season. Can you give them more, another day or two to also do uh, follow-up calls, uh, respond to emails, et cetera. Live chat social media specialists becoming very vital today. Uh, part-time wine education, as well as sometimes your part-time club administrators who've really proven themselves, who want just a little bit more. If you can see that they're friendly, they're super thoughtful and high-touch hospitality um, folks, then that's a good opportunity to think about cross-training. Also, when it comes to outsourcing, I can't say enough about some of these services you have right there in the Valley, um, you know, as far as how much access they can extend beyond just referral to neighboring uh, winery properties, et cetera. All right, lastly, we're going to talk about the, the uh, top key takeaways today. Do make sure to leverage your wine brand's unique access points. Package and build itineraries. Just start with that three to five that complement your unique offering. Weave that content into all your digital marketing messages, your website copy. Market to current and prospective customers or have a plan in place uh, to go to market with this. Ask the right questions and offer customizations by customer type. And it's, that's gonna be critical and that's going to evolve over time. Um, as we know in this industry, uh, luxury wine buyers, the needs change over time and we have to really stay relevant on top of what those uh, accommodations and questions are. Um, Cross-trained staff or outsource, you're gonna have to decide that on pretty early uh, depending on your bandwidth. Use smart tools and CRM notes, have a good plan in place for what that's gonna look like through some training and then establish reasonable goals and track resorts quarterly. And that's a great time to reward for success, reward your concierge as well as your referral partners for the success that they're driving, which reaching that 20 to 30% increase. In some cases, it could be 10 to 20% increase in visitation or in online bookings or in contact form um, inquiries, et cetera. All right, I have left, uh, it's 11.01. I've just got a, a minute over time, I apologize, but I'm gonna leave the last five minutes here if you're interested uh, in Q&A, please, this is your time.
All right. You've all been a wonderful audience today. I realize you have a lot on your minds um, through COVID and preparing for the holidays, um, thinking about how to provide more high touch tools and services um, to a variety of audiences. I hope that you have found this time to be beneficial and I am excited to hear about where you go with your concierge style services. So do reach out. So Sandra, thank you so much for leading today's webinar. It, it's always amazing how fast two hours goes by. You are this seriously this wealth of information and um, we truly appreciate your expertise in really helping our members, you know, either rethink or um, building this concierge style service for their clients. Um, and truly, um, I think what I always love is that there's these actionable takeaways that we can um, really start to dive into with our team to really uh, build out a thoughtful program as it pertains to each of our member wineries. So I just wanna say thank you again. Um, and as you mentioned, uh, we will be posting a recording of today's session on our members only website. And um, Sandra, thank you for offering to um, answer any questions that vintners may have offline uh, after today's session. Thank yes, you. Kat and Jesse, thank you so much for hosting today. I know as we conclude our 2020 series of consumer engagement, strategies. We do have another tentative date for November, which I will be circling back with you all on and hope to see those in the audience uh, in November as well. For now, wishing you all a wonderful harvest season. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.